Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page four of Let It Be. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to be doing so you have an idea of where we're headed. Because I did a mock up. So let's set all this aside, get it out of our field of vision. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be page four and five. We've got a large flap and a pocket. This is going to open and it's going to pull out this two sided card. Okay, so that's what we're doing for page four and five. Page four is going to open to the left, page five will open to the right. So all the cuts are the same. It's just the orientation and the layout that's going to change. Okay, so that was just a mock up. We're going to make one together. So pull in your pocket page, make sure it's in landscape um, format. And we're going to start with this guy right here. We're going to start with the pocket. <clears throat> okay, our pocket is going to be three and a half inches deep and it's going to be nine inches across. So it's going to go the whole length. Okay, and we're going to do something a little bit different with the installation um, to make sure that we have um, a smooth. Um, opening and closing of that card into the pocket. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, I'm shedding, sorry, the, we're going to put a tick mark at the one inch mark on the top and bottom of the pocket page. So you're going to come in one inch from the outside edge, both on the left and right side, and that is going to be the location of this pocket. Okay, so make sure you get your one inch tick mark in and then <clears throat> once you score a half inch on three of the four sides I want you to go back in your trimmer and trim any excess paper off just the bottom uh, the sides don't really matter just the bottom so make sure you have tape covering the whole score of the bottom edge of your pocket <clears throat> and this matters because we want to make sure that as the card goes in and out, it doesn't get trapped between the untaped edge. So tape all the way across or trim off anything that doesn't have tape on it, okay? Now set this aside for a second, because the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our designer paper uh, to where we put that one inch mark at, okay? Now I marked right on the edge, so even after I put my strips in, I'm still going to be able to see my one inch mark, which I want to see because when I go to put my pocket in, it's going to go right on the one inch mark, which is going to slightly cover your one inch wide strips. Now, how is that possible if you came in one inch? It's because you're going to come in from the edge a little bit for your border. So once you come in a little bit from the edge, that means this little bit that's probably a sixteenth of an inch is going to go right underneath your pocket. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these two pieces in. I've already trimmed them and inked them. I'm going to turn it toward me. Uh, let me tell you where this came from. This is from the 8x8. I liked the scale of the 8x8 better than the 12x12. 12 12, the, um, uh, the stripes were just uh, wider, so I like the scale a little bit better. This is one of my favorite ca um, papers in the collection because it really gives you that bumblebee vibe. So <clears throat> these are one inches wide, one inch wide by seven and seven eighths. That's what I've done. So I'm going to pull the edge close to me so I can really see my border and make sure that I get this in nice and even. Okay. <clears throat> and I am using art glitter glue, but. I got so disgusted with my label because it was so dirty, I peeled it off. <laughs> I got tired of looking at it. I don't really want a new bottle because over time these bottles get softer and softer and easier and easier to squeeze. So I don't want to give up my bottle just yet. I keep refilling it. But I am still using art glitter glue as usual. <clears throat> so I try to make my stripes even, but I can tell my bottom stripe is just a little bit thinner than the top. So I don't really care if it goes on the bottom or the top, I just want them to be the same. So in this case, they're both gonna go toward the bottom. So when you visually look across, the um, stripes will line up. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, so do I have a, a contrast sheet somewhere? I need one. Well, I'll use this green will, will help. So there's the edge of the strip that I laid in and then right below it, and I'll put this down here, is my tick mark. So this much of, of um, the, that designer paper is gonna go under the pocket, which is about a 16th of an inch. Okay. I'll do the same thing on this side, gonna make sure I've got my stripes lining up. <clears throat> it's already inked and we're ready to go. I just filled my bottle, I'm not used to it yet. I keep going heavy on the edge. <clears throat> that thumping in the background is my wash machine, so hopefully I can get that out with my software. Okay, so that's in. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is lay in our pocket. <clears throat> Again, make sure that you've got tape covering the whole flange that we scored or trim it down so that it's just covered with tape. Okay, and then this is going to go in at that one inch mark. And actually, before I put it in, I'm going to um, double check and make sure my one inch mark is clear and that I can use it as a guide, and it is. Okay, so the pocket is toward the center of your pocket page. Oops. I'm going to remark this. I'm having a hard time seeing it. You can always erase it later. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay, now before we close the pocket, I don't usually do it this way. I usually put all three sides down at once. But I did it this way deliberately because I want to put a piece of tape over this just to make sure it's very smooth because part of the action is for this card to go into the pocket. And in no case do I want it to get hung up on uh, this flange here. And that's also why I wanted to make sure there was tape all the way across so that it wouldn't sneak under the paper. So uh, scotch tape is fine. Um, as Probably most of you know, we just started carrying, um, I'm digging around, uh, this tape from uh, My Creative uh, Spirit, which is um, the signature construction tape. So we just started carrying it. So I'm just going to use uh, a strip of that right over. Um, and I would have just used scotch tape, but I just don't have any handy. So either one's fine. Just make sure it's a, a flat um, tape that um, is uh, relatively thin. You don't want it to be thick, otherwise the um, the feature will just get hung up on whatever you're taping down. Okay. And this is nice and thin, the uh, construction tape. And it tears beautifully. Here's, here it is. <clears throat> so you can use your tape tear tool on this as well, <clears throat> which I can't live without. The idea of having to pick up scissors and trim my tape just... I don't know how I did it before. Once in a while I'll do it, like right now, because I don't have enough to tear. Um, but no, my hands get stuck in, in the scissors, and it's just too time consuming. Okay, now we're gonna burnish that down nice and flat. Make sure there's no opportunity for anything to get under it. And that way our mechanism will go into the pocket nice and smooth. Okay, now we're ready to put our sides down. And again, page five is going to be the same design 
um, it's just going to be a mirror image. Beautiful. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is start install the flap that goes here. And the same thing, we're looking for our tick marks to install it left and right. And I need to trim this down. I originally designed this to be seven and a half, and then I went back and modified it so that it's only six and a half inches. So after you score, you've got a six inch finished panel. And I did that just to get better utilization out of my 12 by 12s. Um, I could get two panels covered, um, but my mock-up was seven and a half, and it was an, so basically an inch wider. So I'm gonna take an inch off this. <clears throat> Okay, so now our finished flap is six and a half inches across by eight inches tall. Six and a half by eight. So I need to change my little number here. And it'll be in the cut list. And of course, I'm running a banner right now telling you that it's six and a half. <clears throat> okay, we're looking at those two tick marks that are one inch from the edge. So far, this is just like any other page. No flap in a pocket. Beautiful, okay. And we should have enough overlap for a magnet. And worst case, if we don't, we'll put something over here to do an extension, okay? So there we go. So we've got a flap in a pocket. So the next thing is the card that we're going to construct that's gonna go inside the pocket. Okay, so you're going to need uh, seven by seven, seven by seven, score a half inch, and this is six and a half by seven, six and a half by seven. So seven is the height, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to set this aside for a second. These two pieces are going to go together. So on the six and a half by seven, you're going to score at the one inch mark. Okay, so this is six and a half by seven, score at one inch. Okay. This one inch is going to get added just like this, and that's gonna become the card, and this is what's gonna go in the pocket, okay? So again, this is your six and a half by seven. This is your seven by seven. You've got the score at a half inch on the seven by seven. So it's gonna to go to one side, and then you're gonna score one inch on the six and a half by seven, and it's going to go on the opposite side of your half inch, okay? And we're just going to marry this up like so. Now you could have done this with a single piece of paper and scored it and folded it over, but it, it was bigger than 12 inches, so I cut it into two separate pieces. So we're gonna glue this together. You could use tape if you wanted, but I'm gonna use glue. And we're just going to marry it up to the edge, opposite of the half inch score line. Okay, beautiful. Okay, we're gonna lay it down. We wanna make sure everything is flush. And if not, throw it in your trimmer and make it nice and crisp. Okay, so when you're done, when you fold your score in and you close your card, it should be flush. Now, mine is just a hair longer than the un what's underneath it, so I'm gonna trim it off. <clears throat> just to slice it. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna pull this back in. Now your half inch is gonna go on the flap. It's gonna go above your score line. So you've got 
You've got a flange down here attaching your flap to your base. You've got your flap up here. You're going to apply this flange right up here and stay out of your score area. Make sure that you apply this above that score line. Okay, and we're going to center it. <clears throat> so I'm going to create a tick mark both here and here, and then I'm going to apply that. I'm going to pull out my Tim Holtz ruler. And I'm attaching it just above the score line, so that's where I'm going to put my tick mark. And it's going to be right at four inches. <clears throat> and the, the center here. It's going to be at three and a half. It doesn't want to lay flat because I scored it. Okay, now that should be pretty easy to line up. I'll put this tick mark right on top of that one, and we're done. And then we just close it up. Okay, so there's my score line, right? That's gonna go inside that pocket. So that needs to be up. So if you did it this way, then your card wouldn't open. Of course, you wouldn't have your flange either, okay? So once you add the score on the opposite side of your hinge, you need to make sure it's face up when you install. As close to the score line without interfering. centered. Oh, that doesn't look centered at all. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. So I need to lift that really quick before it takes hold. This is another tool I can't really live without. <clears throat> it's a spatula, you'll find it in the paint section. <clears throat> Excuse me, if any of your craft stores. <clears throat> it must be. <clears throat> this must be what's off. <clears throat> well, I'll say, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm off by a quarter inch. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, let's do that again. <clears throat> now it should work. <clears throat> okay, beautiful. Oh, you know what? Uh, oh, we're still okay. Oh, no, we're not. We need to lift that off again. We need to put the designer paper down. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> okay. It's a good thing I didn't burnish. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> so we've made this. We're going to set this aside. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, add our designer paper here, and then we can install that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start decorating some of this. So here's my papers. <clears throat> That's going to go in my pocket. I've got um, these trim pieces. Nope. That's not right. That are going to go... Here, I think I gotta put it back together again to make sure I've got everything covered. This is gonna go here. This goes on top. And then here's what's going over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay down this piece. <clears throat> 
And let's draw a line real quick and see where our flap is landing as far as a magnet goes. Oh yeah, we've got plenty of room for a magnet, so let's go ahead and lay one down here. And that's what's gonna hold everything together. Get out of my fat tape. And when I say fat, it's 5 eighths inch wide. <coughs> I like to cover the magnet for two reasons. One, that the edges are not beveled, so they're kind of sharp. Um, but the other reason is um, it sticks to the magnet right away, where if you're putting your designer paper on top of it, sometimes the glue doesn't want to dry on top of your magnet. So you might have your, your designer paper pulling away from the magnet slightly. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and cover this pocket since we've got our magnet in. Well, yeah, we're gonna be okay. We'll cover it and then we'll find the opposing magnet. And that is the bees, and this is from the Patterns and Solids. I should have dry fit that before I took my, my backing off. I planned it, but sometimes it's Looks good. <clears throat> Beautiful. <clears throat> Now we can go ahead and lay this in. It's not inked. So I'm just knocking off that white core. I'm using Powder Puff Mahogany, my go-to brown. Not yet, Nala. It's almost time. Let me get this finished. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, so over here is where we're going to install the card that goes in the pocket. Now, I don't want to cover this whole thing in designer paper because I feel like that's a bit of a waste because when you have it open, you're really not going to see what's behind it. You just see these two edges. So I'm going to put two strips in. <clears throat> before I add that, just to come in um, from the edge. And I don't, I don't know why, but it doesn't seem like this is the right one, but it must be because I've got so many of them. <clears throat> so I need two and two. I'm gonna close this. This has this. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so we're gonna put these um, right here and I think they're a little longer than I need, and they need to be inked. So <clears throat> these are one inch. They don't have to be that wide. It's just easy to handle in the trimmer. They really only needed to cover a half inch, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. I'm going to mark this and trim it real quick. 
and then whatever I trim it at, I'm going to do the same thing here. <clears throat> so we'll call it I trimmed it right at five, and that's just perfect. <clears throat> but check yours, because depending on where your pocket lands, you might need a little bit more or a little less. Pretty heavy on that side. It's going to slide slightly into the pocket. I'm just looking to make sure my line is consistent all the way across. And when I say line, uh, the border line. Beautiful. Okay, turn this at one at five. And <clears throat> ink it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, beautiful. Okay, now the last piece is, is this, which is gonna slide into the pocket. So we're gonna turn it so I can see this edge. Now I've already marked the center point of this. So there's our half inch flange, right? And the card's gonna open like this. So you've got a one inch score line here and a half inch tucked under score line here. There's the center, here's the center. We're going to add it. It's going to be just above that score line so that the flap can operate without interference. Okay. And the last thing is we're going to take this one inch piece. It's going to go right inside that pocket. And we close our flap. It's going to look like that. Lovely. Okay. We're ready to put our designer paper here. This is from... 8x8 eight eight, Patterns and Solids, and this is from the 12x12 12 12 Collection Pack. And I'm just dry fitting before we put it down. It looks perfect. So. Look at that, just like downtown. That's wonderful. Okay, let's burnish everything with our bone folder. Isn't that pretty? So we're gonna have a mirror image of this right here. I love these stripes. Okay, now we've got our card to cover on the inside. Okay. Now, what I was planning to do on the inside, oops, I pulled out of the pocket. So this is on the outside, sorry. So that's my current plan. And then on the inside of the card, I think I hadn't really, I don't have a plan yet. So I've got, that's too much green, so I'm gonna set those aside. I've got some papers, some, trimmed papers, which I have a lot here they are, <clears throat> that are left from, <clears throat> from this. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. 
So I had two pieces left over. And so I was thinking of doing this, but I'm not completely sold on it yet, and having a yellow strip here and a yellow strip here. So that's where my head is at at the moment. But <clears throat> I've got a long way to go in the book, and so I'm not really sure I want to use these here. So I'm going to set those aside for the moment, but I do know that I want to use this here. So we can go ahead and lay this piece in, and everything looks beautiful. I just need to ink it. <clears throat> So I think that looks, that's a very nice flow as far as color and pattern, which is what you're always looking for. And it has continuity with the colors that I selected in the um, closed position as well. Oh, I was going to see if it had an orientation, but it doesn't really seem to have one. So, okay. So, one of the things I wanted to do too is make sure that's down good. Again, that's not going to show, so I have no plans to cover it. It shouldn't come out of that pocket. This is what I was afraid of. It does get a little hung up right here, so it may make sense to cover this so that this part of the card is on the same plane as this. So I was worried that that might happen, and I haven't done this before, so I'm kind of learning as I go. So I think I may put a strip here. Um, again, to put it up on the same plane. Now you don't want to cross the score line because if you cross the score line, then it won't want to open for you. So you've got to kind of cover both areas. So make sure it's burnished well so it doesn't want to pick up when you close it. And then I'm probably going to come back and uh, put something on the bottom. I don't know what yet. But I'm just going to burnish a little more and see if I can't train it a little. To close for us without adding that paper if I don't have to. It's not a big deal. It's only one inch strip. I mean, even if you didn't want to use designer paper, you could just add one. Oh, there you go. You could add a strip of black paper there. So uh, at the moment, it's no, it's it's going to struggle a little. So I think I will put a piece of black right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So it needs to be just under. Or actually, I could bend it back a little and see if that helps, too. That might actually make it worse. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to add a strip of black and seven inches. And it's one inch wide, so I'm going to make it just shy of one inch. I'm digging through my scraps. I have to cut through a whole sheet if I can avoid it. Okay, you want to come as close to the score line without getting in the score line because you want this to open freely.
Okay, hopefully this is gonna do it for us. Brush that. Yep, that did it. So we just need to make sure that this is on the same plane. So we added a layer here, we need to add a layer there. Let's solve that problem. Cool, I'm so excited. Okay, we still need to cover the inside of the card. So when I get back, we will do that. That's the end of page four for now.